Uh, GDPR requires that any consent given to the use of its data by a uh, data subject has to be in response to clear and transparent description of what that data is going to be used for. And Google signally failed to provide transparency and clarity. And as a result, a complaint was brought against it uh, saying exactly that. The regulators are now beginning to take regulatory action. The fine against Google, I believe, is the third uh, made across Europe. The previous one in Portugal at the back end of last year was against a much smaller hospital organization where the fine was some 400,000 euros for uh, a much lesser set of breaches. Google is a major uh, player in the online world. Uh, they have a very much bigger turnover than many other organizations, so uh, the fine was uh, therefore going to be quite large. And um, 50 million is quite a reasonable size fine for an organization like Google. Should help Google to pay attention. The complaint which led to the fine was made on the 25th of May, the point at which GDPR came into force, and uh, two voluntary organisations made complaints to Keneal directly about what uh, they believed was the illegal use and collection of their data by Google. Google started the investigation, it appears, virtually immediately. Uh, the investigation uh, extended to uh, conversations with the Irish regulators, that's where Google's head office is based. Uh, but they started immediately and it's an indication that uh, here we are in uh, January 2019 at the point at which fine is issued for the first time. Uh, that's kind of how long a major investigation uh, takes. While Google's European headquarters are in Ireland, Canil's preliminary investigation, uh, remember that Canil was acting uh, in response to a complaint di made directly to it by two not-for-profit organizations. Canil's preliminary investigation indicated that Google in Ireland had absolutely no control over the way in which Android as an operating system or Google's platform was configured. Uh, and they concluded from that that there was no practical sense in transferring the case to the Irish Data Protection uh, Regulator, um, but they took action against uh, Google in the uh, US on the basis that that's the entity that uh, is responsible for how the operating system works. Well, there are the steps that Google should have taken uh, prior to the 25th of May. Google, like all the rest of us, did have two years notification of the fact that GDPR was going to come into force on the 25th of May. And the regulations are pretty clear that uh, you can't aggregate permissions. If you want to get permission from somebody for the use of their data, you have to let them identify each, you have to identify each of the items that you want permission for and they have to be able to accept or reject uh, them individually. You have to provide transparent, easy, straightforward access to information and millions of companies across Europe have done exactly that in preparation for, uh, for GDPR's uh, uh, impact day. Google, for reasons known only to itself, decided to continue with practices that were to most observers illegal. Um, and one would hope that what Google does right now is get on with complying with the law. Organizations ought to be stepping up their compliance efforts in any case because after all GDPR in the UK, the Data Protection Act 2018 is law. The potential penalties are very substantial. Uh, if any organization is sitting there thinking, well, it's not really going to happen, the point about the fine in Portugal, uh, the fine in uh, against Google is that while investigations take some time, they do come to an end. And when they come to an end, they clearly quite often lead to fines. And what's interesting about both uh, these fines is that neither of them have been triggered by very substantial, what you might traditionally call a cyber breach, where um, uh, many person's data has been made uh, illegally available. They've been triggered by reports which have led to investigations that identify that organizations are simply not complying with the law. Um, and so they really are very clearly compliance 
uh, regulations and organizations who are hoping that because they are secure, they're not going to have a breach and therefore they're unlikely to find themselves facing investigation should take note of the Google investigation. It hasn't had a major cyber breach, but not complying with the law has led to a major GDPR fine. Any organization that thinks it's not compliant uh, should take a couple of steps fairly urgently. You should send a whole lot of staff on some GDPR practitioner training courses, for instance, so that they can learn how they can help your organization get themselves compliant. You might go on to uh, our UK website and take advantage of the GDPR uh, checklist option that there is there and can walk you through what you need to comply. More sensibly, given that uh, time is not on your side, and you may not have the expertise you need, you might ask a company like us to come and do a GDPR gap analysis to tell you all of the areas in which you need to be getting yourself compliant. And clearly, for any organization, that's much more than simply how do you deal with consent. It's certainly, if you look at the Portuguese data breach, uh, fine. It's certainly to do with the extent to which you've assessed risk correctly, you've identified appropriate controls, and you've got evidence that those controls are working and that evidence is based on ongoing audits and those are part of the specific findings in, in Portugal which point at what organizations need to do today, get compliant and prove that you're continuing to check that you're compliant.